Hi, I'm Whitney and welcome to my channel. If you're interested in gaining financial freedom, following me along on my journey of investing to my first investment property and everything adulting, then you can click the subscribe button right now. Today, I'm gonna to be showing you how to use my budget template to create your own budget for 2021. The best thing about this budget is number one, it's free. I suggest that you carve out about an hour to an hour and a half of your time to set this up on the back end. But once you set this up, I promise you that the simplicity of literally typing in your income and your expense into a app on your phone and it automatically populating your budget in your income expense report form, you're going to be like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I did my budget any other way. Or in general, you're gonna be like, oh, I have a budget and it's perfect. I'm done glorifying it and making it so exciting. Let me show you what I'm talking about. I apologize for the sound quality throughout this video. There was a lot of planes flying over. Whitney's budget 2021. My salary says $3,000. I do not make that much, but we're gonna put a flat number so it's easier to understand. $200 for housing. I live at home and I work at home, so my housing, transportation, and food are pretty low. I'm going to make a few adjustments because obviously I didn't put any money in ties this month. If you ever mess up, just drag down in the column that it is in and it will fix itself. I went over budget in my phone bill, but technically this isn't even an expense for me because my job covers it. Verizon charged me twice, which I know because I keep track on my income slash expense report. For shopping, I went over budget $25. Um, and so we're going to check the income slash expense report to figure out why. So my budget says I'm supposed to only spend 50 and I spent 74.51. So let's take a look. So it says in home goods, I spent 19.65. Okay, cool. So where did I go over? Scrolling. Okay, shopping, I bought a new Bible, 5686. That's where I went over. It's okay, because I didn't really spend that much anywhere else, but I just need to be aware. Again, food, I live at home, so that's why my expenses are the opposite. And I spend about $966, no more than that, but I spent $998. So I, obviously I went over budget, but if I hadn't had the expense with my phone, then there wouldn't have been an issue um, because it's typically not an expense for me. Here's my savings. 25% of my total savings goes towards emergency fund. 50% goes towards property savings and 25% goes towards trips. You can make that however you want. It adds up to be $2,001. It is my total income minus my total expenses. The great thing about this is that I can check and see how much I would make if I made multiple streams of income or if I wanted to see how much I could afford an apartment. So let's say that this is $1,300 that I, a potential apartment that I wanna see if I could afford. Well. If I kept everything the same, I'd make $933, but obviously food would have to change because I would have to have groceries now. So we're gonna say this is 150, and let's check and make sure everything else would be fine. So we have restaurant, 150, we're gonna change that down to 100, and it automatically populates to tell you when you're over budget. Fun with friends, we're gonna keep that the same. So we end up spending $2,116. So I should spend no more than that a month, and that will leave me at $883. That's not gonna work for me because I want to have a savings of at least $1,000 per month. So I need to lower it. 1,200 leaves me with $883, still not really working. It's not 1,000 in my savings. 900 leaves me with $1,283 potentially. So I know I can spend no more than $1,100 on an apartment, and I also know that I should probably get a roommate. So over here is my financial goals, as well as my over budget. And all I do is press an equal sign and go to the amount or the month or the expense, um, and it just automatically populates, and then I will type in my reasoning behind that. This is just so that I can keep track of why I'm going over budget and make things clear for myself instead of having to go through my income slash expense report. And that's it. And this is very, very simple. Now I'm gonna show you how this works on your phone. Here's my Google Sheets, which you can download on Apple um, or apps. And then there's my Whitney's budget, 2021. 
and you can see it and I can perfectly look at my budget whenever I am out spending my sh money. If I'm spending my money and I need to fill out my form, it's on there and I can fill it out. So we're going to say it's February the 2nd, 2021. Transportation. For the sake of this, we're going to say we went to Mapco and I spent 57.67. Submit. Then I can go into my actual Google Sheets and it will populate. See that? I'm over budget. Oh no. And you can see it in the income slash expense report. You see how wonderful and easy that is? It just takes you a second to set up. We're going to start out on my YouTube page and I'm clicking this video here, but you can go into the current video you're watching and go into the description box, click show more, and then at the bottom you'll see budget template and click that Google Docs link right there. It should take you to Whitney's budget template. It's a view only budget at the moment. So as you can see, you can only view it. You can't make any edits. So you need to sign into your email address. Um, preferably a Gmail is how you're going to be able to access this. And so now I'm signed into my alternative email address and I'm going to go to budget, copy, new spreadsheet, and then open new spreadsheet. And now it's in my Google Drive for my alternative um, email address. I'm going to go back to the budget link that I clicked on from the video, Whitney's budget template, and then I'm going to click income expense report, copy to existing spreadsheet, and click the unentitled one. That's the one that we just made. Okay, now we're in my spreadsheet and we have copied over everything that was in the original budget template. So we're going to exit off of that. So as you can see, none of the actual data is in here. So we're going to have to fix that. It's a simple fix, but first let's change our name. Or, um, from unentitled to the name of your budget. For the sake of this budget, I put Taylor's Budget 2021. It's unisex, so it just makes it easier. Now you can see all of these NAs, and we're going to fix that really quickly. So as you can see, there's this copy of income expense report. This is important. Right now, this is in a Google Sheets um, format, but we need that to be in Google Form. So we're going to log into our email address, and then we're going to click those dots at the top and scroll down. If your Google form is not there, then you're going to go to more from Google, type explore and click forms. Sorry, I'm moving kind of fast. I don't know why I was going so fast. Go to Google forms and now you're going to create a form. Blank. Now we're going to call this Taylor's budget form. So now we're just going to put a few of our questions. The first one will be date. And if you have to go check, that's the reason why we're copying this over so that you can remember. This first one, our first question should be date. Second category, then item, then amount. Now we're going to type in date and that's going to be our first one and it needs to be required. Then category. And we want it's multiple choice. It has a drop down menu and it's also required. Then, then item, short answer, and then amount, also short answer, also required. Item is not required because not everything's going to require you to type in what it is. Like your rent is your rent, but if you went to a restaurant and it was a sushi, then you can put in another one. So now from my form, I'm going to go to responses and create spreadsheet. And I'm going to add my spreadsheet to the current existing, select existing, um, spreadsheet that I already have. The one that's Taylor's budget. See it there? Click it and select. And so now this form is inside of my spreadsheet. And it now says date, category, item, and amount. And we can actually remove this one. But first, we're going to copy and paste this income part because and I'll show you just a moment. This part is really important. Copy, delete, paste, 
The reason we did that is because in our budget, all of these NAs are connected to our income slash expense report. So if I click on one of these NAs right there, you see income slash expense report. If you press enter, it's automatically going to recognize that that is what it's supposed to be connected to. Then carry that down and carry it across and now it's set up. And do the same thing for housing. Just double click it. I've already done the hard part of building this formula for you guys. If you ever accidentally zero out one of the cells that have the formula in it, just drag from the surrounding cells and it will fix itself. If you're interested about learning it in depth, please let me know in the comments below. But for people who like simplicity and really don't care to try to learn how to do this, I made this for you specifically. So now just double click it, press enter, and you're going to drag that down and across and then do the same thing again. And so yeah, now it's all set up for you. If you notice down here in savings, it automatically fixed itself. That is because this is connected to, it's your income minus your expenses, which equals the amount that you saved for that month. In my savings account, I have it set up so that a percentage of my savings goes to three different savings account. But for you, you can set it up a completely different way. 25% of what I save goes towards emergency funds, 50% goes to my property savings, and 25% goes to trips. But you can change that to whatever you want. Let's say you have a dream fund or your emergency fund and just your dream fund or emergency fund and just a trip fund. You can do that instead. Here I also have my fixed expenses and my flexible expenses. My fixed expenses are expenses that are typically the same every month, and my flexible expenses are again, expenses that are flexible. It's pretty self-explanatory. So these categories are going to go inside the categories within your budget form 2021. They're going to go right here. So you're going to click option one and type in the first thing, and you're going to go so on and so forth until you get to the end of your list. I advise that you take a screenshot of your B column in your budget of all your expenses and your income. This is important because it's very interconnected. Your spelling needs to be correct and it needs to match what's in your budget. Just so that this is already done, I'm going to send this to myself so that this can be an email on my phone and I can use the link on my phone to create an app. Here's the email. I'm going to click that and fill out the form. This form is going to automatically populate my budget as well as my income slash expense report in my Google Sheets. So we're gonna fill out the form. Let's say this is January the 31st. So today's January the 31st. I'm doing groceries from Kroger and I spent 2536. Submit. And now I'm going to go to my Google Sheets. So you can see it right there, but first let's check the income expense report. So it's populated. Um, I went to Kroger, it was groceries, and I spent $25.36. Perfect. I can just check, make sure everything's right. And then I went and I went over budget because I do not have anything in my budget, which the green column, C, is my budget. And since it's over zero, the $25.36, I've technically gone over budget. And I can enter into my over budget area by just pressing the equal sign and clicking the cell that is over budget. So now it's fine. I changed this to 150 and now it's fine. So the total over here adds up for the total groceries for the year. The total in the bottom corner adds up for the whole entire year. And then as you can see, the total where for January adds up. So now if you want this to be color coordinated, we can add that also. So you can change this page to match the colors that are in your budget. This is optional. I have mine set up this way, so I'm gonna go ahead and show you what it looks like, but it's not technically necessary. So here's my budget template over here, and then here's my actual budget for 2021. So I'm going to click that. And here's my budget. It's actually not updated because I was going to wait and update it on here, but just disregard all of that. Um, here's my income slash expense report. It's color coordinated so that it can easily pop out on what I've spent money on. So if you want yours to look like that, then click column C. 
We're going to go to Format, Conditional Formatting. Go to Text Exactly and put whatever your job occupation is. You're just going to fill it out with all the categories that you have. So housing, rent, groceries, Hilton Hotel Manager, whatever you do. And then you're going to match that color for whatever you chose that word to be in the budget. So I like to do mine on a gradient. So if you want to do yours all blue or all purple, or if you wanted to do it more like a rainbow gradient or um, whatever you choose, just so that it's easier whenever you go and align for all of these. So in order to work smarter and not harder, you can actually just copy and paste the column B, just the income and expenses, and put it into the income slash expenses report. Just pick one of the columns on the right side and paste it there. So now you have it there easy for you to access. If you need to change something, you can easily go to the setup form and just change it to properties. Or if you want to change housing to rent, you can change it to rent and it will change on the form and then you can just change it in your budget also. It's whatever you need. Now we're again going to go to format and then conditional formatting. And then we're going to text exactly and type in properties. Click the bucket and click the color that we need. Perfect. And then we're going to finish this out. We're doing this in column C because this is the column that all of the categories are going to be populating in. That's why we want that to be color coordinated. You're going to go through and do this for every single category and then you will be finished. Now to be sure I did this correctly, we're going to go to Taylor's budget form. So the form that you're going to be filling out and we're going to fill it out. We had an income. We're going to say it's July 2nd, 2021, just to make sure it's working later on. Properties um, and $1,000 from a property. Press submit and go back to our budget. There you see it. It's populated $1,000 for properties and budget. Okay. And it's populated June. In June, we made $1,000 from properties. I said July before, but yes. And that's it. Now it's fully set up for you. Um, all you have to do is just make sure, you know, everything matches. Now you can just go in and delete this. And that's it. Let me show you how to set this up on your phone. So go to your email address. Then click the email. Go to fill out form. There you can see the form. Click that arrow with the box at the bottom. Scroll down just a bit and click add to home page call it what you want and then add and there it is right there well i'm going to put it in my budget spot and then i'm going to go to it and click it and you guys can see it goes straight to the form perfect yeah and that is the end of this budget so i really hope that this helps you out um if you like this please share it because i feel like it's so beneficial for so many people um, thank you for watching and you have a blessed day.